Yeah, see, that's another thing that I, I that I like, but I also hate about competitive players. It's just like once someone finds that one set that is just like the best, and I put air quotation marks around the best yeah, usage of a Pokemon. Yeah, wants to use it. Yeah, but then they'll just completely ignore anything else. Like, Stay Tuned Park. Let's look at Stay Tuned Park, because that guy is amazing. I love him, and I was rooting for him the entire time during Worlds, especially when I saw that he had a Pachirisu, which I think is absolutely adorable. But We all, we all know what to get you for Christmas, a little Pachirisu. It's so cute! But, um... I wanted to root for the American teams because it's been a while since anyone from the U.S. had won a world championship. I think it's been about three or four years. But after I saw Seijun Park's team, I was just like, you know what? Screw it. This is why Japan wins. This is why Japan wins. They bring the craziest shit and then they just sweep. Like, he had a special attacking talon flame with bulk. What? Who, I never would have thought about that. I just, I like the choice band, Brave Bird, everything, and just go kamikaze into things. I just yeah. do. Yeah, I actually, I think I saw one of his battles, and it looked like a similar talent flame that I have, because my talent flame is, you know, a lot, max investment in HP, and the split defense is, I think, a little bit in speed. But it has Bulk Up, it has Roost, it has uh, Brave Bird, I believe, and I can't remember. Oh, and Will-O-Wisp for its last move slot. And it's holding Leftovers. And it that thing can just sit there and enjoy everything. Oh, yeah. It can handle Stealth Rocks like nobody's business. Thunder, no problem. Mm-hmm. Love it. Uh, another interesting uh, move set that I have, it's for an Azumarill that I have. It actually has... Uh, Hidden Power Ground. I actually don't remember its special attack stat. <laughs> uh, I don't remember either, but the reason I wanted Hidden Power Ground is for Feral Thorn and those weird ground types, because I wanted to burn it and whittle it down a little bit, and then next thing I know, Earthquake everything! I mean, no, Hidden Power Ground everything. Huh. Yeah, and uh, here's another weird problem, because I'm still, you know, getting into competitive play. I'm still, you know, working out the kinks on what kind of a player I am. Uh, it's a friend of mine. We went to school together for a little while. I knew his younger brother a bit more, because the younger brother was in the same grade as me. And here's actually some advice that I give out to all you who are getting into competitive play and feel like you should just give up the game. Don't do it to make other people happy, because I know every time I try to make this particular Poke Battler happy and, like, try to win his acceptance, I make myself miserable. Aww. Which, which is, like, bad news. I mean, I understand kind of why. I Because he's a, he's a pretty good battle. He's really good at what he does. And I'm like, if I can get him to acknowledge that I'm getting better, then everything will be fine. But then I end up making teams that I don't feel comfortable using with. There's no trainer and Pokemon synergy, which is another thing I think people need to realize is find out what kind of a team and what kind of a battler you are before... And and start doing that, because if you're like me, and you kind of want a slightly offensive, more on the survival defensive team, you're not going to be happy with a really fast-paced, hit-everything, not-going-to-be-able-to-really-recover-well sort of a team. Mm-hmm. That's so, actually really good advice. I mean, I don't... I try to branch out a little bit so I'm not so I'm a bit less predictable because I think the worst thing any player could be is predictable. Oh yeah. See that's that's actually what we get you killed in a lot of competitions. If you are predictable, that's all that they need. They don't need a team that has more power, they just need to out predict you. Like Yeah, every let, let, let me let me give an example. I don't know if you watch the uh, US national stream. But did you watch the junior division? I did not. In fact, I I didn't watch most of the battles except for the little bit with the champion and the talon flame. Ah, all right. Well, um, U.S. Nationals. There was a junior team, and it was it was down to a boy and a girl. And the girl had a Mega Kangaskhan on her side, and the guy had a Ferrothorn. And every time she would bring out her Mega Kangaskhan, he would just switch in the Ferrothorn. And so it would just take, like, 
a third, almost a half dam- uh, of its damage and just be completely demolished within the first two turns. Every single battle. So he actually wound up winning because he outpredicted her. Because she was being too predictable. I gotta give props to that kid. Like, like the girl, like, we don't see too many of the girls make it up to, like, the top cut. But, you know, like, if you're gonna play like that, you don't deserve to be. I'm sorry. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I would admit, I definitely make a lot of bad decisions. Yeah. I, I, I will openly admit that there are times where I just make bad choices, which is why uh, he who shall not be named had beaten me those two times, because I brought in the wrong teams, and I made poor decisions. Honestly, I wouldn't blame yourself too much, because he did kind of lie about what tier he was bringing. So, when you're going to lie about tiers, don't, don't give yourself any credit on a win. Just don't. But, um... Uh, I, yeah, I would say my problem is that I rush into plays because I just, like, I get way too nervous and I either overpredict or I just completely go in another direction. Like, I go against my gut feeling and then my gut feeling was the one that was right. That what would to- Gibbs say? What would Gibbs say? Listen to your gut. Come on. <laughs> but, um... I think the last argument we should cover on this video, since we're running at, like, what, 20, 30 minutes now? Uh, my clock actually says 43, 40, yeah, 50, 43, 50. Yeah, but remember, we didn't stop the call, so... Oh, yeah, we, we had to, yeah. Definitely, and I will do some editing and make it short. Or... All right. Well, last argument we've got to cover is comparing Smogon to VGC. Oh, definitely. I don't think we covered that this time. Yeah, we're not... not... Not the second go around. Yeah. So, for anyone who isn't familiar yet, Smogon is mainly 6v6 uh, singles, and VGC is flat rate uh, 4v4 doubles. And it's really hard to make a comparison between the two because they're vastly different formats. Because with VGC, the format is, besides, you know, how many Pokemon you can bring, that format is changing every season. And then you have a look at the, uh, Smogon where it's changing like every few weeks because they ban something to Ubers or they raise something up to OU or UU or they bring something down. It's just, it changes all the time. And it's hard to keep up with, for me, at least. Oh, definitely. And then you also have, um, what is it? Uh, Smoke On doesn't have item clauses, does it? I don't think it does. I think I think it does. No, I'm, think, pre- I'm pretty I'm pretty sure it doesn't. I I may be horribly wrong, but I know in some tiers you're like forbidden to use particular items. Ah, uh, yeah, that's the thing. But I was just thinking of like using more than one of the same item. Like, oh yeah, I have like five leftovers on one team on Smog On. Oh my god. Yeah, I actually have a bunch of uh, leftovers on my Y game because of Digger B and Pickup. Yeah, so, I think and, I only have like four for myself, but I, I got those through trades. I got so lucky with those Digger B. So if anyone needs like any extra battle items or anything, let me know because I got a ton of crap. <laughs> nice. Um, but another thing to keep in mind is that well, it's it, it really is. It just comes down to that it's just two completely different formats, and you can't really make a comparison or say that one is better than the other. It just depends on what your play style is. If you like the hyper-offensive, like, only takes about ten turns at most kind of battles, doubles is what you want, because singles is very, very slow. I, that's that's all I gotta say. I, I I can agree that eventually I will warm up to doubles. I'm still a little bit hesitant on where I stand for singles versus doubles because I would like to try to get into doubles in case but that's what the world is going to be next year. That's what the format's going to be. I actually want to get ready for that because I want to see how far I've come in the past year as a battler. Because I mean I grew up with Generation One on the Game Boy. Ah uh, yeah. 
I actually have my Alakazam from that game on my Y. Oh, that's awesome! That is hardcore dedication to this Alakazam that I have. I flat out refuse to use any other Alakazam. See an Ever in the Wild? Screw you! Aww. <laughs> I have mine! That's love. That is much love. I want to build a team around him, but like I said, but like you said, it's not a fair comparison to compare singles and doubles. There are two totally separate things. You can't compare a sandwich and macaroni and cheese. Not going to happen. Well, so, actually you can because they both use grains. So ha ha ha! And they can both have on my channel. They both have cheese if you want it to. Ha ha ha! Well, everyone, thank you for watching. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe. If you want to be in a conversation video with me and or Jenna, feel free to let me know and we will plan some, I will plan something with you. Thank you again, Jenna, for working with me. I hope to be working with you in the future on these videos. No problem. And good night, everybody. Phil, play me off. Do 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 do